Hi everyone, my name's Eleanor and I'm the Education Manager at Benjamin Franklin House. Welcome to this week's live history class where we're going to be thinking all about Georgian buildings and architecture. And um, as ever, we're really looking forward to your participation in the class. I'm going to be asking you some questions and you may well have questions for me. So you can either type in the chat or if you press the raise hand button, then I can unmute your microphone and hear you over the audio. So um, in a moment, we're going to be getting started with a question. Uh, if you are watching this as a recording, you um, can always get in touch with any questions to by sending me an email to education at benjaminfranklinhouse.org. So um, of course, one of the reasons we're doing this is that Benjamin Franklin House was built during the Georgian period. So this is um, the period from the beginning of the 18th century to the beginning of the 19th century, when there were lots of kings called George. So we've got a picture of Benjamin Franklin House here and um, some other typical Georgian houses on the right as well. So in case anybody is new to our history class series, um, I will tell you a little bit of background about Benjamin Franklin and the house he lived in in London. Here's a picture of the inside of the floor that he lived on, Franklin's parlour. Um, but would any of our attendees like to help me out with that? Anyone like to share things they know about Benjamin Franklin and what he was doing in London? So Benjamin Franklin was known for lots of things. Claire has said that he is a scientist and a politician. Exactly. Those are probably the things he's best remembered for. He was also a writer and a printer. And yes, Claire's also said, and in fact, probably what he's really best remembered for is that being one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. And it was the period just before America became an independent country that he was living in London in this house on Craven Street, we now call Benjamin Franklin House. You can see an illustration of the outside of the house. This is from our sticker book that we have at Benjamin Franklin House. Uh, and Benjamin Franklin lived here. Um, he was a lodger. So there was a landlady, Margaret Stevenson, and her daughter, Polly. And he lived, he rented these rooms on the first floor from them. So this time when he was in London, he was um, kind of trying to improve relations between America and, um, and Britain when America was still part of Britain. But eventually that wasn't going to be possible. And that's when there was the War of Independence and um, the United States of America was formed. And so we do these history classes on about the Georgian period, as this was when Benjamin Franklin was living in London. And um, this week we're thinking about buildings and architecture, which Benjamin Franklin House is an example of, of course. So I've got a question for you now. I wonder if you could try and explain to me what is architecture? Do you know any famous styles? Um, we're talking about Georgian architecture today, but I wonder if you know any other ones as well. A very good description from Claire. So architecture is the design of buildings, exactly. I can see a raised hand, so let me go to that. Hi there. Hi, um, is it um, something to do with building houses? Yeah, absolutely. Building houses and other types of buildings as well, like um, hospitals or airports today or mu uh, museums as well. So all of those things, very important. Um, so interestingly, Claire has said Roman architecture. We're going to be coming back to that. And then also modern design. So yes, you might have modernist architecture. Just before the Georgian period, um, Baroque architecture was really popular. Um, some examples of that would be the buildings made by Sir Christopher Wren. So buildings like St Paul's Cathedral um, that were built just after the Great Fire of London. So yes, yeah, so architecture is the design of buildings and you have to take lots of different things into account. So thinking about the, the location of the building, what it's going to be used for, who it's going to be used by, um, what materials are available and the cost of those materials. So it's a kind of, it's an art and it's also a science and lots of buildings are real works of art, but they also have to be functional as well. So very interesting things to consider. And in fact, whoever um, built Benjamin Franklin House had to think really carefully about location because we're very close to the River Thames. And because of that, the ground is quite wet 
and a bit unstable. So um, to help with that, in our basement, we have these very, um, very big flagstones that actually go down a metre deep into the ground, and that's to help secure the foundation of the house. So lots of things that um, are taken into consideration for this architecture design of buildings. So um, someone mentioned the Roman architecture, and that's actually very important for the Georgian period because that was a big inspiration for the um, buildings in the Georgian period. So let's think a bit more about that. So um, when we talk about classical architecture, we mean buildings from um, not just ancient Rome, but also ancient Greece. So here we have a picture of the Acropolis, a very famous building in um, Athens in Greece. And um, there are lots of uh, sort of classic features of, of these buildings. They, they had to follow very strict rules. They would be symmetrical. And um, there was this thing known as the golden mean. So um, this is kind of illustrated in this picture of the, the front of the Acropolis on the right. So um, the, the rule of the golden mean was that when you were making a building or a room, you wanted to make sure that the, um, the longer side should be 1.6 times the length of the shorter side. So there were all sorts of rules to follow. Uh, another rule was about the height of um, an arch bridge. It needs to be a certain amount. So these are some of the, um, the features of classical architecture. You'd also see a lot of columns as well, like we can see all the way around the Acropolis. So I wonder if you can see, so these, these pictures at the top are both of the Acropolis. Now, this one at the bottom is in a classical style, but it's actually not as old as um, this ancient Greek building. You can maybe see that from how it's in much better condition. So this building was designed and, and then the building, the building of it was overseen by um, an Italian architect called um, Palladio. And he, well, he lived um, after the ancients, but before the Georgian period. So he was, um, in, he was in, living in Italy in the, um, in the 16th century, that's the 1500s, so about 200 years before Benjamin Franklin was in London. And he sort of brought back those, those features of classical architecture and really stuck very strictly to the rules um, that were laid out by those classical architects. So, um, so, so when it comes to Georgian architecture, we see the influence of, of this um, later architect, Palladio, but also the original um, classical styles as well. So those are all really important to Georgian architecture. So one of the features that we see in, um, in Georgian building is that symmetry. So I've got a couple of, of pictures here. We can see from the line down the middle that they really follow that symmetry. Um, you often see columns as well, and um, these, these, these parts at the top, we saw that it was a bit um, not fully there in the Acropolis, but we see that kind of um, triangle at the top as well. So that's some examples of features of Georgian architecture. You've seen some pictures here and the picture of um, Benjamin Franklin House too. So I wonder if you've spotted any other features that we see in Georgian buildings. What could be some clues that we could use to recognise them? Are there any other common features that you've noticed in the buildings that we've seen so far that were built in the Georgian period? So Claire has said about flat windows and lots of windows, and they're tall and thin, definitely. Well, let's have a look at some of the features. So we'll talk about windows first, since you um, since you mentioned them. So yes, they have windows. They would often either have um, six panes or nine panes or twelve panes, and the panes are these um, the kind of smaller rectangles within the windows. So you can see lots of examples of twelve pane windows in this drawing, um, and also over here as well. Um, and um, so let's think about some other features we had too. So um, often Georgian buildings would be two rooms deep, and that's the case at Benjamin Franklin House, and they would be either two or three storeys high, and actually Benjamin Franklin House is four storeys high. So often there would be a panelled door, um, and that might be in the centre of the house. In smaller houses, like um, the one on Craven Street that we now call Benjamin Franklin House, it might be at the side. 
And then above the door, you have these lovely kind of oval windows that we call um, fan, fan lights, and that would let the light into the, um, into the hallway. Um, so some other features would be thinking about um, on the outside of the building, again, the, the roof would be tiled and it would be hipped, which means that it kind of slopes in a few different directions. And then in, in front of it, you'd have this kind of um, small rectangular wall that would hide the bottom of the roof and you call that a parapet. And then you might have some kind of um, decoration on the outside, we call cornicing and also molding. Um, that again is thinking about those classical styles and you can see through the window here this column. Now you might also have that cornicing on the inside of the house, we have some in at Benjamin Franklin House and also you'd have probably these shutters that you could use to um, shut out the light rather than rather than curtains. Also we have those at Benjamin Franklin House. In terms of the chimneys, if it was um, a larger house like the one in this drawing, you might have one on each side, again, thinking about that symmetry. And so there's not a hard and fast rule that Georgian houses have to have all of these things, but those are just some of the clues that might tell you that it's a, that it's a Georgian house. So um, because the Georgian buildings have some of these features that are inspired by either that um, architect Palladio, um, so we call them a Palladian style, or they go further back to the original classical buildings. So we call it, because they're reviving that style, we can call it neoclassical style as well. So those were all important influences in Georgian buildings. And it was actually um, quite political, the reason that architects liked that style because um, the political party that was in charge of Britain at the beginning of the 18th century were the Whigs and they felt that the Baroque style that had come before from people like Christopher Wren um, was a bit over the top, a bit much. They wanted to return to this simpler, cleaner um, style of an in, inspired by the, by the classical um, buildings. So that's how it came about and it really did um, go all the way through the century, although there were some changes over that time as well. So let's now think about the layout of a Georgian building. And um, this building you can see on the right, this is in um, Bristol, where there's lots of um, examples of Georgian architecture. So we'll go through the different floors. So at the top, you'd have the attic rooms, and this is most likely where servants would have slept. Then on the second floor, that's where the family would sleep. On the first floor, you'd have a drawing room where you'd entertain. This would often be the kind of grandest floor with big windows. Um, and you'd have a library and a withdrawing room. So um, in previous classes, we've talked about Georgian society and kind of the relationship between men and women, and they were often kept quite separate. So um, after a meal, the, the women would go to the withdrawing room and have their discussions, and then the men might go to the library and, and have their discussions. So there's this quite um, strict separation that would happen, and that would be reflected in the design of the buildings too. Then on the ground floor, you would have the entrance hall and you might have a study and a, and a dining room. There might be a separate breakfast room and also a powder room. So in the Georgian period, the, the, the fashion was to wear a big powdered wig. Um, so you'd have these powdered rooms where, um, where the women could prepare their wigs before, before leaving the house. Then in the basement, you'd have the kitchen, uh, and the laundry where the washing would get done, and probably there'd be a, a room for the housekeeper. And then some Georgian buildings might also have a sub-basement where there'd be a furnace for heating and a cistern to collect rainwater. Now, um, Benjamin Franklin House um, does have these four floors, like in this house. Um, it's a bit smaller, hasn't got, it's got the um, front door on one side. Um, but because it was used as a lodging house, so it wasn't just one family living there, it was Margaret and Polly and then Franklin and his son William and all of their servants, the layout was a bit different. So um, they, Margaret and Polly had their um, kind of 
um, rooms for entertaining on the ground floor. Franklin had his rooms on the first floor. And then Margaret and Polly had their kind of living rooms, their bedrooms on the third floor. And then the servants would be in the attic. So it was a little bit different at Benjamin Franklin House because it was a lodging house. So there were two, two families share, sharing the building. So we've talked about um, some different stuff, what architecture is, some different styles of architecture, and then some of the features of, of Georgian architecture. But coming back to, to this word architecture, I wonder if you can describe what architects themselves actually do, and whether you know any other famous architects. We've mentioned Andrea Palladio and also Sir Christopher Wren, but I wonder if there's any more famous architects you've heard of. Fantastic. So Claire said, since architecture is the design of buildings, the architects are the ones that actually do that design. They have to think carefully about measurements, of course, because it, remember, architecture is a mixture of the art and the science, um, because the builders are going to have to follow those measurements. And architects today will work very closely with engineers who will then um, kind of be the in between the architects and the builders. So really thinking about the science of, um, of the measurements and how the building will fit together. I can see a raised hand. Hello. Hi. Um, isn't there an architecture called um, Gui Gaudi from Barcelona, Spain? Yeah, absolutely. Gaudi's a really famous architect. He did the very famous cathedral in Barcelona, Sagrada Familia, uh, and he's got a very distinctive style and there are lots of his buildings all over Barcelona. Thanks. Thank you. Um, fantastic. Yes, and some, some other famous architects. So going back to ancient times, um, well, not quite ancient times, more um, sort of in between ancient times and, um, and the Georgian period. We had Michelangelo, who was a famous um, Italian architect and artist, and he uh, designed some of the parts of, some, of the St Paul's Basilica in um, Rome. We spoke a bit about Sir Christopher Wren, who did lots of important buildings in London, like St Paul's Cathedral. And then if we think more recently, there's, um, we're thinking of modernist styles of architecture, a famous Swiss architect um, called Le Corbusier, does a lot of very modern houses and many of them are kind of painted white. Um, and then even more modern and very recently, there is the, uh, the British Iraqi architect Zara Hadid, um, who is famous for using lots of curves in her architecture. And actually, the, um, the aquatic centre that was built in Stratford for the 2012 Olympic, Olympics was, was her design. So that's a few examples. I can see another raised hand. Hello. Hi, um, was Leonardo da Vinci um, an architect? That's a really good question. He, he did lots of different things. He definitely designed um kind of inventions and things i'm not 100 percent sure if he was an architect but he um definitely designed lots of interesting things as well as being an artist i'll have to check that one thank you thank you okay so those are some architects kind of throughout history but since we're focusing on the georgian period um in these classes let's look at some famous architects from that period and the buildings that they designed so someone who was an important architect from the beginning of the Georgian period was William Kent. And we can see some of the, the symbols that show his, his job. So, of course, in these times, architects would do lots of sketching and, and drawing on paper. Modern architects will still do lots of sketching, but a lot of their work will be done using computers and special programs, because uh, obviously this helps them get the measurements um, exactly right. Uh, and William Kent was, um, was a bit of a polymath, so he did lots of different things. We also describe Benjamin Franklin as a polymath because he also did lots of things. Uh, he was very artistic, so as well as designing buildings, he designed furniture um, and theatre costumes and, and did sculpture as well. We can see the sign of that in this portrait too. So um, some people say that it was William Kent who really brought that, um, that influence of the Italian architect Palladio um, into England. And we can see some examples of his famous houses that he designed here. So there's Hokum Hall in Norfolk. And again, we can see those classical features that the, um, the pillars here. 
Um, and then, so this was a very grand house that was owned by um, Sir Robert Walpole, who was kind of the leader of the British government. So we sometimes call him, he was almost, he wasn't officially Britain's first prime minister. He didn't have that title, but that was kind of the role that he held. And um, he also um, employed William Kent, who sort of redesigned Downing Street, where current prime minister will live today. You can see that here. And I actually used a picture of the door earlier in the class as well from Downing Street. And then we have a uh, Wimborne house. So another grand house. This was actually, he was asked to design this by another um, British politician. So uh, someone who was prime minister a bit later um, called Henry Pelham. So that's William Kent. He was at the beginning of the, of the Georgian period, the beginning of the 18th century. And then another important architect was Robert Adam. So Robert Adam was born in Scotland and his father was also an architect. So um, the Adam style was, was um, popular in the Georgian period. And here he is in his portrait. You can see he's got a big book. Um, so they're always in these portraits, including symbols of, of what they do and their interests. So a famous building that's not very far from us here at Benjamin Franklin House that he designed is the Royal Society of Arts. Um, that's right in the centre of London, um, near where we are on Craven Street. And if you, if anyone joining has ever visited Hampstead Heath uh, in London, you might have visited Kenwood House, this beautiful house there. And then um, another city in, in England that has a lot of Georgian architecture is Bath. And so there's this beautiful bridge, Great Pulteney Bridge here. Ah, so um, Xavier has just oh, Xavier has just um, written in the chat that Leonardo da Vinci was involved in architecture as well. So we've got lots of these figures like Benjamin Franklin, who we can call polymaths because they really just did so many different things. Um, so that's Robert Adam. He was more in the, the middle of the Georgian period. And then um, someone you might have heard of who was more towards the end. So remember at the end of the Georgian period, we call it the Regency period because um, the, uh, George IV was um, acting as the, the ruler of England because his father, George III, uh, was, wasn't very well. So he was known as the Prince Regent. And so here's Sir John Soane on the left. And um, he, he was the son of a bricklayer. So um, his father was involved in, in building and, and through those connections, and he was a very talented drawer, he was able to get a bursary to study and then also to um, go on a trip around Europe that lots of people or gentlemen at the, at the time would do. And um, so on that trip, he went to visit some of those ancient ruins in, in Greece and, and Italy, and that really um, had a lasting impact on him. And he was very influenced by those classical styles. So he designed a building for the Bank of England. Um, it's sadly not, not there anymore. It's a different building now. But he worked as the architect for the Bank of England. He designed Dulwich Picture Gallery, which is a beautiful building in London, a lovely museum. Um, something he's very famous for is he had lots of interesting approaches to making sure that rooms were very light. Um, and in fact, he his own house, um, Sir John Soane's house, or I think it's Sir John Soane's museum now, um, has a lot of examples of these interesting um, windows in unexpected places that make the light come through. And he was also a great collector. So he collected lots of paintings and sculpture, uh, models of buildings, and had his own kind of house museum when he lived there. And so um, th that's now a museum that we can all visit. So I really recommend visiting there if you ever get an opportunity. And another famous building he designed was Freemasons Hall, which is also not very far from us um, in, in Hoban, in the centre of London. So that's some examples of some very famous uh, Georgian architects. I'll now share with you, we've, we've, taught, we've seen lots of examples of Georgian buildings, but let's look at some more places that you could go and see Georgian architecture if you were interested. So um, across the UK, as I mentioned, there's lots of Georgian buildings in Bath. And in fact, when there are TV programs that um, are based in that period, a lot of the filming might be might be might take place in Bath. And then we have Aberaeron in Wales and uh, Dublin as well in Ireland. And then just remembering that, of course, at this time, um, 
as we said before, Benjamin Franklin left London. So up until quite far through the Georgian period, America was part of Britain. And so some of the buildings in America, the early buildings were really influenced by this, this Georgian style of architecture. So on the left, we've got some buildings at Harvard, um, Harvard University in Cambridge in Massachusetts. That was very close to where Benjamin Franklin was born in, in Boston. And then also um, this beautiful building, um, uh, Independence Hall in Philadelphia. So that's the, the, the place where Benjamin Franklin spent a lot of his time. Of course, he was in London as well, and he also spent some time in France, but most of his life was spent in the city of Philadelphia in America. So um, we're coming towards the end of the class now, but um, I'd like to suggest an activity that you might like to complete as a follow on from the class. Um, and that would be to do um, your own drawing of the kind of facade of a Georgian building. And you might decide to look at some images, um, it could be Benjamin Franklin House or another one of the buildings we, we looked at today, um, look at some images online, or um, you might want to um, look in your local area and see if you can use those features we went through to spot um, where the Georgian houses are and see if you can do a drawing um, of that as well. And we'd always love to see anything that you do um, as well, sharing, sharing images with us. 